I'm Bradley Williams, owner of Buckhaven Land Solutions, Forestry and Wildlife Management. Uh, and this video is documenting the process uh, of clear cutting and doing site prep and replanting the site in a longleaf pine to improve this site's value for wildlife and to still have some timber uh, producing on the site for future revenue. I uh, hope you enjoy this video and uh, feel free to call us if you have any questions and uh, stay tuned for more. All right, so uh, we're done with the uh, replanting of the longleaf pine on this site. Um, basically, we'll show you the process, but this site was clear cut and then uh, we did our herbicide application for site prep. We did a site prep burn, and then we came back and planted uh, longleaf pine, containerized longleaf pine seedlings on this site. Uh, the benefit to longleaf pine is it is a little bit slower growing tree uh, versus loblolly, but um, it spends a couple years in the grass stage, like what you see here, putting down a deep tap root. Uh, so it's better able to draw moisture out of dry sites uh, and it also is a much more fire adapted species. Uh, the benefit for wildlife for planting longleaf pine is two years after planting, uh, this, this longleaf will be ready to burn again. And that allows us to maintain a very herbaceous uh, early succession plant community within this regenerating longleaf forest. Uh, that provide a better benefit to wildlife. Whereas loblolly pine, you really can't burn it until it reaches about three to four inches in ground diameter, which can be up to about 10 years before it's ready to uh, burn again without running the risk of damaging your, uh, your saplings. Um, so longleaf is a great uh, alternative to loblolly if you're interested in uh, wildlife management. And you can also get cost share um, in most areas in the natural longleaf range to uh, get some money to help offset the out-of-pocket cost of replanting and maintaining that stand with uh, prescribed fire. So I'm gonna step out of the way so you can see um, the, uh, the, the herbaceous component of this stand and how a clear cut can benefit wildlife uh, greatly with the uh, component of native grasses and forbs that respond when you use the, uh, the right herbicide application. Unfortunately, I was not able to get the actual herbicide application for the site prep on camera. My schedule just did not line up with the uh, helicopter schedule, um, so that kind of stinks So we didn't get that on camera. But I did want to talk about the chemicals we chose to use for the site prep and uh, why we chose to use the mix we chose over maybe some other common chemicals. Uh, the mix we chose to use was a mix of uh, Garlon, which is triclopyr, and Escort, which is MSM or uh, methylfurin methyl, hope I'm saying that right, uh, and a, uh, a non-ionic surfactant. Uh, another common chemical used in this area for uh, plantation pine is a mazapir. And I mainly want to talk about the difference in using the MSM versus the Amazapir on this site and especially why it's a little bit better in my opinion for longleaf. Uh, I definitely can't take credit for this. The, uh, the information that we made this decision based on came from Georgia DNR and some research they did at the uh, Spruill Bluff WMA which is a very similar site uh, in soil type and topography to uh, the site we planted this longleaf in. And uh, one thing they found in these studies is that a mazapir, while it does a great job of controlling your, your hardwood sprouts and it, it, it is soil residual just like MSM, but the, 
the vegetation response following the amazapir, the amazapir was still limiting a lot of uh, native grass response uh, post application due to its soil residual activity. And it was not doing a great job controlling uh, blackberry response. And the issue that causes in longleaf is one, we're gonna burn this longleaf stand uh, two years after planting. That, that burning of the longleaf can actually help control some disease problems that you can get in longleaf seedlings. And it really helps it jump up out of the grass stage and start putting on uh, growth. But um, that, that, that native grass component is really important to help carry that fire through that stand of longleaf. And the amazapir is limiting the amount of that uh, native grass response that you're going to get. Uh, the blackberry response is not a bad thing from a wildlife management standpoint, but if blackberry gets too thick, it can really uh, shade out a lot of those native grasses also. And it, blackberry itself just does not carry fire well. Um, so we chose to go with the MSN to retain that native grass response and limit that uh, blackberry response. And uh, it worked great. The, uh, the mixture of the Garlon and the Escort uh, really knocked out the, the hardwoods that we were trying to control. Uh, and our vegetation response we got following was, was full of native grasses. Uh, unfortunately, the MSM does still have residual control on a lot of Forb species that I'd like to see respond. But uh, as that residual activity starts to, to decline, we'll get some of those species back on the site in a few years. Uh, but it did a great job controlling blackberry. Uh, there was very little bramble species that we saw uh, germinating on the site. So I think our, our first burn in this longleaf stand is, is gonna go really well. Um, we did still see some Forbes species in there. Uh, it's not like all we had respond was native grasses, but um, I, I definitely think that choosing the MSM over the Amazapir was the correct way to go in this uh, this longleaf plantation with the uh, intention of having a very quick fire return and it will come back on the site. Um, you may be asking why use a soil residual herbicide at all? Why not just use Garlon to control the uh, woody encroachment? Well, uh, the reason for that is to help with seedling survival. Uh, if, if we had a strong response from the blackberry, from several different uh, forb species that grow very vigorously, uh, they can outcompete the seedlings. And, uh, you know, our, our primary objective on the site is wildlife management, but we also have a very strong secondary objective of timber revenue and we need good seedling, seedling survival on the site is why we chose to also include a, uh, a herbicide with soil residual activity. We just chose to choose the one that would help facilitate our uh, management goals uh, in the coming years uh, over one that, that might um, make it increasingly difficult to carry fire through that site. Thank you guys for watching our first three videos on this project. Uh, like and subscribe our channel. There'll be more videos coming up as we start implementing prescribed fire, uh, doing some of the uh, logging debris cleanup, uh, putting in some food plots. Um, so in time, there'll be more to come. There's also a lot more land management content on our page. Um, if you guys need help implementing a management plan like this in uh, Georgia or Alabama, give us a call. We'd be happy to help you. 
Um, again, let uh, creation point you to the creator. He loves you. He wants a relationship with you. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, look us up at buckhavenlandsolutions.com or give us a call, 706-300-1016.